Okay, this is the eighth lecture. We're gonna talk about maximum modulus theorem and Schwarz lemma. Um, because last time we finished with maximum modulus theorem, so I wanna kind of finishing the maximum maximum modulus principle related content in the book. So I jump to chapter chapter six. Okay. Okay. And thanks to my girlfriend, she wrote the title for me because I'm suck at handwriting. Okay, so before that, let's define the boundary of a set. So X is a topological space or metric space, whatever you define. We define the boundary of a set A is the intersection of closure with A and the closure of complement of A and X. Okay, so this is the boundary. And here we have some propositions. So first, the boundary and the interior are disjoint. And secondly is that the closure can be expressed as a union of interior and boundary. And because they're disjoint, so they, it can be expressed as, a, it can be partitioned. Like if you say, if you wish to say it like that, you can partition the closure into interior and the boundaries. And the third property is that if A is open, it's equivalent to the boundary of A is equal to A bar minus A. <coughs> okay, so you can, prove C by applying B. So we'll get that, okay? So let's prove A first, is that if they're disjoint, so suppose for a contradiction, we can find an element that's in the um, it's in the intersection, then we can pick a neighborhood of U such that U is in A, right? And, but, well, X is an also in boundary, which means that every neighborhood of U, right, you're in here, which means that every neighborhood of U intersects the complement of A. Right. So you're in the subset of A, but you have intersection with the complement of A, which is obviously a contradiction. So it's proven. Okay, so part B is we want to show that the closure can be expressed as a union. Okay. So for X in a closure, suppose you're not in the interior. Then if you're not interior, which means that every neighborhood of U should be intersecting the complement of A. Well, that means that you're in the closure of the complement of A, which means that you're in the boundary of A, okay? Because you're already given that you're in the closure of A, so you're in the intersection, which means that you're in the boundary. Now, so this proves this direction, right? It's the subset of interior union with boundary. So if you're if you're already interior, then we're done. If you're not, you must be in the boundary. So this proves this direction. Now for this direction, you're in interior means that you're in A, right? Because interior of A is a subset of A, A is a subset of complement of A. And if you're in the boundary, then you're on that automatically so. So we're done. So part C is that equivalence, right? So if A is open, the interior A is A, so by A and B, we have this, right? You just, you just remove the interior of A, just, just make it to A. And boundary of A is this, yeah. So for other direction, if, if you have this, which is equal to this, which means that A is equal to interior of A, which implies that A is open. Okay, so this proves um, um, three characterization of a boundary of a set. Now this leads to our um, first theorem. So before that, let's review the maximum modulus theorem. So if F is analytic in a region and there's a point such that you attain your maximum modulus, then you must be a constant function. And the second version is that if G is a bounded open set, so we dropped the condition of being connected. And suppose that you're continuous on the closure and analytic in G. Then the maximum of F on the closure is attained on its boundary, okay? So this is the meaning of this theorem. Okay, so let's prove it. Proof. Okay. So let's start. Now, what we have, we're given that G is bounded, right? G is bounded. So G is G 
is bounded, which means that the closure is compact, right? And also f is continuous, which means that this function is also continuous. Well, the function takes the norm or takes the absolute value is, is a continuous function. So why is it a continuous function? So its image, its image is zero to infinity, including zero, right? So you can think about as a subspace of the order topology on R, right? So if you're taking any open set, say this open set, you take the inverse image. Well, the inverse image of this, which is the point zero, and every point here corresponds to a, to a, to here, right? Every point here corresponds to here. Every point here corresponds to here. And that, uh, like, ultimately, you should be a open disk, right? You should be an open disk because we have open, I mean, we're, we're like open interval, right? Open parentheses. So automatically, the inverse image space should fill out the entire open ball. Right, with this radius, say, say this is equal to like, what, r, like zero r, right? Then this radius should be r. So it's the open disk, which is clearly open. Now, second case. Second case, if you are something, if you're something, okay, if you are something like this, right? This is still open, right? So for this set, now you wanna take the inverse image. Well, we can follow the same logic, right? Your norm should be somewhere here, which means that you should be at least, say this is A and this is B, okay? Then your radius, should be at least a, right? At least a, and everything at most b, right? At most b. So our image set is the region between them. I mean, our inverse image set, right? Is the region between them. Well, this set is a open donut, open, Open honey cruller. Open double chocolate. Okay, which is still open, right? So I hope you, uh, you're convinced that. I hope that's persuasive. Okay, I hope this argument persuades you. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is continuous, which means that. By extreme value theorem, right? This is continuous. We can we can pick a belongs to closure such that f this is greater than equal to all the f of z for all z and the closure of j. Okay, the closure of g. Well, now, right, what we want to show is that the maximum value on G prime, I mean, G bar is equal to the maximum value on the boundary of G, right? This is what we want to show. The maximum of this word Z on the closure, well, the maximum is attained on the boundary, right? So this is what we want to show. Now, first case, is that oh if f is constant then there's nothing to prove right now if f is non-constant if f is non-constant right well first we know that the maximum on this is gonna be greater than or equal to the maximum on the boundary. Why? Because wrong, wrong direction. Because the boundary is a subset of 
is a subset of the closure, right? The boundary is a subset of the closure. Why? Because we have the boundary, right? It's a subset of the closure. Okay? So we have this. So we want to show we want to we want to show this direction, right? So you attain maximum at A. You attain maximum A. So now, if A is not in G, which is the interior of G because G is open, then A is on the boundary, right? Well, we have this, right? If you're, if you're not in G, then you must be on the boundary, which gives equality, right? If it's already on the boundary, it's already on the boundary, then this automatically follows, right? So what we want to discuss is that if A is actually in G, right? Now we're gonna use our results from the second lecture or the first lecture is that we let A is in C some connected component of G. Some connected component of G. Well, because G is open, that implies that C is open. Okay? And F is analytic on C, right? Because it's analytic on G, so no shit. And we can apply maximum modulus theorem or principle so that because you're, you're analytic on a connected set and right, and you have a A is in C, right? You have a maximum modulus then you should be a constant function, right? So you should be the constant function f a on c, right? You're a constant function f a on c. Now, since f is continuous, right? One important property of continuous function is that the, is we have this thing. Okay, we have this. Well, this is really the closure of the set F A, and singleton, a uh, single point set or finite point set, are closed. So it's equal to itself because we're in a Hausdorff space, right? We define the metric topology, which is Hausdorff topology. So we have this is equal to this. Well, this further shows that. F is equal to F A on the closure on C, right? On the closure of C, closure of the component, okay? Now, let's do something. Let's do some observation. What we can do with this result. For X is in the closure, suppose that B is in G, okay? Now we can pick a ball, right? That's containing G because G is open. But C union with the ball is also in G, right? And because they, sh they share a common point B, so this is again a connected set because the, the ball is obviously connected, okay? Well, with that being said, we need this to be a subset of C, which means that Well, which means that B is in the interior of C, right? So if you're in G, then you're interior of C, which means that, well, okay, let's start from here, which means that this is a subset of interior of C, okay? Now with this, let's do some calculation. 
which is a subset of C minus G, which is a s minus G, right? Which is equal to the boundary of G. So the boundary of C is a subset of boundary of G, which means that for any beta on a closure, if beta is on the boundary, then we know that you're on the boundary of G. Which means that for any Z, right, we have FZ, we know that Z is equal to FA, but which is equal to F of beta. Right. Because well, you're on the boundary and we know that F is a constant on the closure, right? So we have this. Well, from here, what we can observe, we can observe that the maximum of this is less than or equal to the maximum on the boundary of G, right? Because beta is in the boundary. So every point in the closure, it should be less than or equal to some single output on the boundary, right? So the maximum of this must be ma less than or equal to the maximum of this. Well, which proves our result, okay? So this is the maximum modulus principle. And this leads to another important result, which is called the Schwarz lemma. So the Schwarz lemma states that, so this is an open disk, uh, open unit circle. Suppose we're analytic on the circle with these two conditions, okay, which is the norm is always less than equal to one, and you take zero to zero, okay? Then we know that we have this inequality and this inequality for all z in the disk. And moreover, if we have this or this, then there's a constant such that you're a linear function, okay? So to start, to start this, let's just observe this lemma. Let's just stare at it for now. So we are given that the the um the modulus should be bounded by one, and f zero is equal to zero. If you satisfy these two properties, then we know that the module of this derivative should be less than equal to one, and we have this. Okay, so let's just prove this first. So to prove it, we define G by GZ is equal to FZ divided by Z, okay? And F prime zero, FZ is equal to zero. Okay, right, so we define G this. Now I claim is that G is Just watch my video. Okay, so G is analytic on D. Bro, some dumbass just called me to ask me questions. Okay, so for Z be non zero, we can just apply quotient rule. Right, which means that it's analytic, which means that G is analytic on this, right? Now, for Z, it's equal to zero. Well, first we show that this is differentiable, right? Let's first show that it's differentiable. Well, we're going to compute the limit of gz minus g0 over z, right? Which is fz z minus f prime zero over z. Well, which is equal to fz minus f zero over z, right? Because, because this thing is equal to zero, right? By our condition. Right, by our condition. 
Okay, so we can, I mean, right? Such, oh my God, I just divide by zero. And, well, this is really just the limit of, the limit of fz minus z f prime zero over z squared, okay? So, we know that because f is, what, analytic, we have a power series expansion, right? This is a fundamental theorem result. I mean, fundamental result we have proven in lecture, what, six or something, right? Expansion about zero for, for z is less than, what? Is it one? Yeah. We have a power series expansion. Okay. Now with that being said, we substitute it back. We substitute it back. So let's just continue. Right, let's just continue. Well, let's we'll just keep going. If this is equal to what? Um, fz, which is, well, okay. So the first term, which is f of zero, or, or zero, well, this term vanishes because f zero zero. So we, we can actually rate it as like n from one, right? It doesn't matter because the first term vanishes. So which, which is f prime zero z, right? plus um, z squared over two of f plus uh, prime prime zero plus, well, we start from three, right? Blah, 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 plus z of f prime zero, right? Right, yeah, I mean, minus, divided by z squared. And now we will see that, oh, these two terms cancels out, which left this term, which gives um, one over two, f prime prime zero plus, let me just write a and z in, okay? Which gives you this. Well, this is a constant, so it doesn't matter. It's a constant with respect to that uh, variable z. And because we have uniform convergence, right? If we have uniform convergence, we can interchange. I mean, well, because this com I mean, this series converges to F uniformly and F is continuous, right? Which means that we can swap the limit and, and the, I mean, the summation, right? So after we swap, so we're first letting z approach to zero and then we take their uh, infinite sum, right? Well, which is just zero, right? Which means that, um, I mean this, right? Which is really just this. So first we have proven that it's differentiable, but we wanna prove that it is analytic, so we want to show that g prime continuous at zero, right? So to show this, well, first we know that g prime z is equal to, we'll just apply the quotient loop directly, or z non-zero, right, we have this. Now you expand it again. Minus um, Z F prime zero minus Q F prime prime zero minus from three, right? Blah, 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 something, right? Divided by Z squared. Now, which has this minus f prime zero divided by z minus one over two 
prime prime zero minus infinity of a n z n minus two, right? Yeah, n minus two. Okay. Now we can take z to zero, which gives that well. This is just f prime zero, right? Prime zero minus f prime prime zero minus one over two f prime prime zero, which is one over two f prime zero. So as this g up to zero, it, which is really just So it is continuous, right? Take z equal to zero, which gives you g prime zero. So it's continuous. So g is analytic. All right. Okay. So now um, let's keep going from here. Now we know that, okay, for r less than one, we consider the closed disk G attain attains maximum on this, right? Well, we can pick alpha on the boundary, right? Such that G alpha is greater than equal to all the G Z. Um, all the G Z for um, Z on the closure, right? This is by um, 1.2, right? 1.2, right? The one we just proved. They're 1.2, right? We can just we can just pick the alum, uh, we can just pick the maximum on the boundary right because the maximum of the function on the closure is attained at the boundary so we can just pick a point on the boundary such that it is true well why are we picking that because if you're on the boundary then we know that the module of this is equal to the radius right okay which means that which is less than equal to one over R, right? Because the module of F is less than equal to one, right? We have this. Okay. Now, if there's a, if there's an omega less than one, such that G omega, such that such that this is equal to one plus epsilon which is greater than one. So here we want to say that oh let R approaches to one. So we can conclude that GZ all the G is less than equal to one. Okay. So if there's an omega such that this is true, then first we know that this is true. Right? So we let r is the maximum of omega and one over one plus epsilon. For r being the maximum, we consider its radius, right? We, uh, what we require is less than one. Okay, it's, it's, it's not a it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. Then we know that well. For any gz, it should be less than r, which is less than one plus epsilon for z in the ball. Which means that, which means that, we have this, which means that, right? But we're given that this is true. 
which is a contradiction, right? Well, this means that for any z, for any z such that we must have less than or equal to one, right? Because if you're a bit greater than one, then you get a contradiction, right? It is bounded by one. Okay, so since we have this, which means that fz is less than or equal to z, right? We have this is true already. All right, we already proven this. Well, for this, f prime zero is that g zero is also less than or equal to one, right? Well, g zero by definition is f prime zero. Okay, so we're done. Not yet. We're gonna discuss like well, more ever if blah blah blah, right? So, more ever. Oh, more over. Oh my god. Okay, I don't know English. More over. If we have f z is equal to z, where z is non zero, or we have that f prime zero is equal to one. Well, we know that this means g attain its maximum, which is one, right? g attain its maximum one. Well, if g attain its maximum on one, which means that we can apply mox, uh, maximum modulus principle, we know that you, you should be a constant, right? Because, um, well, this set is a connected set. Okay, this is a connected set. And C is equal to anything, right? Which is equal to one. At, I don't know, at alpha, right? Which means that right. which is what we want. Right. So it's a linear function. All right, so this proves the Schwartz lemma. All right. And here's some notes. Some observations is that, well, we define the Mobius transformation, okay? So for A in the circle, we define a function to be this. And it's analytic for this, okay? It's analytic. And it's analytic in the open disk containing this, okay? For each A, okay? Well, also we have this by direct computation for Z in the ball. This means that phi a maps d into itself injectively, right? Because you have an inverse function and you are clearly surjective. Right? Because, well, you're injective, you're injective, and you can take every value in d, right? It maps d into itself injectively. So which means that phi a d is equal to d. And also we have for each i theta, which is on the boundary, if we set it's equal to one, which means that it takes the boundary onto the boundary, which is exactly proposition 2.2, .2, okay? So proposition 2.2 .2 is that, well, this is the one you want to map onto itself. The inverse is this, furthermore, that maps this onto this. And this is equal to zero, 
and this derivative is equal to this, and for any a is equal to this. Okay, so those are just by um, direct computation, so I'll just skip it. Okay, so here, here's a more notes. So to apply Schwartz lemma, we will let f be analytic on the disk such that we have this and s and this. Okay, so we'll let alpha be equal to f a where a is in a circle and well, we're gonna ask that what is the maximum possible value of the norm of the derivative, the maximum derivative, maximum norm. We define g to be this, okay? Then g0 is equal to 0, and gd is equal to d, g maps d onto d, right? Because this maps the circle onto itself, and alpha is equal to fa, so g maps d into d. Well, we can just imply the Schwartz lemma. Uh, we apply the Schwartz lemma to the function g, which gives that this is less than or equal to one. And we have a direct formula for g prime zero, which is equal to this, which means that we have this inequality. And this equality holds when this is equal to one, which means that there is a c such that c is equal to one and which is equal to this, equal to this, which means that blah, 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 which means that fz is equal to this for z less than one, okay? So this leads to the theorem 2.5, is that let f d to d be a one-to-one -one analytic function to itself, and suppose that f a is equal to zero. Then we know that there's a complex number c on the unit circle boundary such that f is a linear function of a Mobius transformation. If you don't know what's a Mobius transformation, it's fine, but it's just a function, phi alpha s defined. It's defined to be this, okay? So theorem 2.5. First, we know that since f is bijective, we can define the inverse d, right? Right? We can apply to right. We apply to f and g separately, and we notice that f of a is equal to zero, and g of zero equals to a, right? Because they're inverse functions, right? And we know that. Well, for this, if this is true, and alpha, alpha is equal to fa. Well, fa is equal to zero by our assumption, right? Our assumption states that, um, says that fa is equal to zero, okay? Which means that, This and we know that since they are reciprocal of each other, right? Which means that is equal to and this is equal greater than equal to one over. Well, C. Right? Well, recall by Schwartz lemma, if this happens, right? Well, since we have this is some less than equal to, well, if this happens to be equal, right? If this happens to be equal, then we know that f is equal to right. 
But we know that this is the map, constant map, I mean the linear map, right? If you just sub in, you'll see that it's the map, well, which is C times phi A. which concludes the proof. Okay? Because by our note here is that this holds, this equality holds. If this equality holds, well, we know that um, we have this, right? We have proven we have this. And if this equality holds, then we know that there exists C such that FZ is equal to this, okay? Which means that FZ is equal to this. Well, this is the map AJ to Z. If you just, you just check it directly, okay? Then you are some C times the matrix transformation, but, well, there's a simple like case. Well, if F0 equals zero, so if A is equal to zero, Then we know that there is a C such that it's on a circle and F is equal to C phi zero. And phi zero is equal to CZ. So if you map the origin to origin, then there's a C such that F is equal to some linear function. Okay, so this concludes the topic of some application of modulus theorem and the Schwarz lemma. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys.